Here I have a uh, telly that I made. There's another one where I was just trying out different combinations of wood. Uh, this is a Carina body and uh, it's very nice, uh, nice weight that's um, not like the pine one which is about five and a half pounds. This is just shy of seven pounds. Um, I was, once again, I'm, I'm just trying out different things to see what they'll do. I have a uh, Wilkinson compensated bridge on here, which uh, does an excellent job for getting perfect intonation. Um, you know, see, looks, sounds great. Um, the pickups, again, are uh, Lindy's hybrid blue specials, which have the flush pole pieces, except for the D. Uh, he feels that the, the D usually is a, the weakest string on the guitar, so he makes the magnet a little bit longer. He splits the difference, uh, protruding a little out of the front and a little, you know, on the inside of the guitar. And, um, you know, it makes for beautiful balanced sound. With this one, um, the neck is, uh, this will come across as a beautiful bird's eye maple. The maple fingerboard. Once again, I'm building these things um, to, you know, for what I think is the best way uh, to build them. So it, it is a uh, maple with a maple cap. It's just the way I prefer to build them. Uh, so there's no skunk stripe on the back of the neck. traditional um, tele wiring, three-way switch, volume and tone. Once again, it's using uh, the Mojo vitamin T capacitors, uh, which I really feel are the best thing out there. It's the same thing as the old Gibson Bumblebees. It's just packaged differently, and um, it's amazing sound. Uh, the pickguard is Bakelite, but um, I it has a nice enough finish on it that I didn't feel the need to uh, to go ahead and paint it. And some people like the relic uh, look of you know when the paint starts to scratch off. But uh, there's plenty of other parts of the guitar that can chip up, and <laughs> I just assume go with a uh, the, just the natural bake light. <laughs> Guitars, um, Karina. It's a fairly light piece. Um, Karina is very similar to mahogany, but it uh, it has a, 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 a nicer high end to it, a little bit more like swamp ash. So this guitar has plenty of twang to it, but uh, still has a, a nice mid range to it. So um, it, it's a very full, nice sounding guitar. I, I'm really some of my favorite guitars have been Karina, and I've been using it a lot in my building. majority of my guitars, um, the radius of the fingerboard is going to be uh, 10 inches uh, and sometimes 12. I really feel that that's the best combination uh, for comfort and not fretting out when you bend the strings. Uh, 
I really don't see uh, see any point in you know trying to be that accurate as to use a seven and a quarter radius. It's just not much use for it. Um, the frets on uh, this particular guitar, I've been playing around with different uh, fret wire, and obviously it can be the customer's preference to what they get. But um, this one has uh, the low wide uh, Gibson wire and uh, made by Dunlop and. Uh, um, it has a real nice feel. It bends nicely, but it's a low enough profile that you don't feel like your fingers are, you know, going over railroad tracks, and you're not bending strings um, sharp, pushing down too hard on them. <laughs> The nut on this is ivory. Uh, I have uh, several uh, types of ivory. Most, of the majority of them are non-endangered um, mastodon ivory, which, you know, in the most cases, have been dead for 30,000 years, and the ivory is just popping up now with glaciers melting and uh, with coal mining in Siberia, they're running into um, mastodon carcasses all the time, so there's a fair amount of it legally available on the market. The other ivory that I've been using a lot of that's very nice is walrus ivory, which is 25% uh, denser than bone, and uh, really, especially acoustic instruments, uh, does a lot to you know, add to the sound of the instrument. <laughs> 